welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. The EEOC has released data showing that mental health discrimination charges are on the rise. In fiscal year 2021, these charges accounted for 30% of ADA-related claims, up from 20% reported in fiscal year 2010. As we head into Mental Health Awareness Month, Epstein Becker Greens, Cassandra Labiz, and Adam Tomiak are here to tell us how employers can respond. We have the pandemic, which has just really resulted in an increase in people dealing with stress, anxiety, depression. Um, at the same time, we're in a space where publicly we're talking about mental health very openly. And then at the same time, you have employers dealing with a disability that many, you know, many times they might not see as a disability. Unlike a physical ailment, sometimes mental health needs are, are more silent to an employer. And so it can result in an employer taking an employment related action like termination because an employee is not performing at their job function in the way an employer needs. And it turns out the employee is dealing with the depressive episode. So all of this is a perfect storm resulting in increase in mental health discrimination claims. Though the increase in disability claims relating to mental health is a relatively new phenomenon, the framework for navigating these requests remains the same, which is the ADA's interactive process. This process includes first evaluating the legitimacy of the claim, which may involve engaging directly with an employee's mental health care provider, which an employer must ensure they have appropriate consent and authorizations for, after which there's an evaluation of whether there are any reasonable accommodations available. Those are those that do not create an undue burden, but allow the employee to perform the essential functions of their role. It's critically important in this context to ensure that the process is applied consistently and confidentially to manage risk. This will include ensuring that the appropriate stakeholders are involved in the process, and also specifically that managers are insulated as appropriate from information that they don't need to know to prevent an accusation that they were unlawfully mo motivated by protected information in managing their employees and the terms of their employment. To ensure mental health parity and the benefits that are offered, employers can do several things. First, they can look at the health plan that they currently sponsor and offer to their employees and kind of figure out if there are any parity issues and how the benefits are offered. So one, look at whether or not there are access issues when it comes to mental health specialists under the plan. You can increase access if they are found to have access issues, either through direct contracting arrangements with maybe a hospital system that have larger pool of mental health providers, or maybe directly allowing the plan to pay for out-of-network providers in the mental health space on an in-network basis. And lastly, the employer can use their employee assistance program or EAP to kind of expand offerings to employees. And so usually the EAPs are structured in a manner that it's free to the employee and also usually free to their families. And the EAP can provide short-term counseling for employees who need them. Thanks, Cassandra and Adam. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.